Hey guys, welcome to my channel and in today's video is going to be a really exciting one. I think I say that for like all my videos, but I'm genuinely really excited because in case you don't know, I love cream products and Anastasia Beverly Hills, they sent me this ginormous goodie bag filled with lots of goods and it includes some of their latest launches and one of them is actually the cream bronzer that we will be covering today. So the ABH PR team actually sent this over to me and I'm really, really grateful to be on the PR list. Thank you so much. But I just want to let you guys know that most of the time, even though I do get PR, I'm very, very straightforward about it. It doesn't sway my opinion. I'm not like biased just because I'm on their PR list or anything. So I just want to put it out there, okay? Okay, let's just talk about the product a little bit because when they first released the news on their Instagram, I'm not gonna lie, I freaked out. But I was like, oh my God. When I opened this bag of goods, I screamed. Like I screamed so loud, my dad was probably deaf for like five minutes. First, let's talk about the shade range. Now, if I'm not mistaken, they have a total of seven shades in the range. Um, I will say the gaps between the shades are pretty big, but considering how this product works, I think it covers pretty well in terms of the different skin tones. I do wish to see in future maybe a few more, probably up to a good like 10 shades to cover a bit more range because I do think some of the colors have a little bit of a gap in between. So that would have been nice. But of course, I think an extra three to five more shades would really make it very complete. Now I reside in Malaysia and in Malaysia, we only actually have four shades available. The shade launches actually came with just the first three shades and then now they're adding in one more right now like it should be in source right as I'm filming right now and the four shades that we have is actually the four lightest shades from the seven shade range and I do think it's a little bit unfair because Malaysia is such a diverse country we are so like we just have a huge range of skin tones and races and honestly just looking at the four I know and I can think of a handful of my own friends that would not be able to use that product and I think that's a bit unfair and it's kind of a shame because, spoiler, this product is actually really good so I do hope to see the full shade range. Now let's talk about price. This is currently going at 160 ringgit or 35 USD in the States. So technically after conversion, it's actually cheaper to purchase this in the States compared to in Malaysia. And I know what you're probably thinking like, ooh, 160 ringgit for a bronzer. Like that's pretty steep, especially in these like hard times. But let me blow your mind a little because I've done some calculations. First of all, this has 30 grams of product and I will say that is quite a bit actually. In comparison to other cream bronzing products in Sephora Malaysia, which would be the Huda Tan Tour that I unfortunately don't have. And my favorite, the Fenty Cheeks Out Bronzer. Guys, this may blow your mind a little bit. Now, Huda is actually going for 135 ringgit, which is about 25 ringgit less, right, than Anastasia one. However, it only has 11 grams of product. Fenty, on the other hand, is 158 ringgit. I know, it's also up there. It's only two ringgit less than the Anastasia one. But this only has 6.23 grams of product. Boom. Boom. This is actually the cheapest one amongst the ones that I actually mentioned because it is a bang for your buck with the amount of product that you are actually getting. Now, I actually also have the Soul Body Bronzing Balm that looks significantly bigger. Like, look at this. Right, right. This was about 15 USD and then after conversion is roughly about like 70 to 75 ringgit. So a significant price difference, like more than half the price. However, even though this looks a lot bigger, this actually only has one gram of product more. Now, considering that Soul Beauty is also in the realm of like ColourPop, I mean, they are sister companies, this is probably more of like that drugstore range. And the fact that Anastasia is only double the price, I think 
is actually really pretty worth it because most of the time whatever you find in Sephora can actually be like triple the times of drugstore if you do it based on calculation so being that this is only a mere like slightly more than double is actually not too bad I will now put like calculations per gram for all the products so that you guys can see Let's cover the packaging a little bit. I actually love the packaging. It's very simplistic and the material is great. The glass part is actually a frosted matte finish of plastic. The cover is also like a soft matte plastic finish with their logo. It's very clean, very sleek. I really love it. From photos, I initially thought that the cover was actually that soft rubberized kind of material, but I'm really glad that it's stuck to this plasticky kind of material because I'll let you guys see this. This is kind of embarrassing, but this is like my NARS um, cream blush, like a mini version, and it is trashed up because over time it just, the material ain't that great after a while, okay? <laughs> so I'm glad that they stuck to this, especially because like with potted cream products like that, it can get a little messy and over here, like it's actually really, really easy to wipe off and I think this was a very good call. When you open this up, it actually comes with a protective plastic layer that you can see from the reflection of the light. Um, and I actually really like it. Initially, I hated how tight it was and I had to get like my nails to open this up. But over time it loosened up, so that's great. I actually wish that they had something a bit more like the Soul Beauty one. I don't know if you guys can tell, but this one is like a lot thicker and it also has this little clasp on the side. So it's really easy to just, you know, hold and remove. So if there's anything that I would think needs improvements on the packaging, it would be that. Um, but other than that, I think so far it has been pretty sturdy. The reason why I say that is because I accidentally dropped it down my stairs. No cracks, no scratches, all good. <laughs> Another thing that I really like is also that it does not have a smell. Now, if I have to put a smell towards it, yeah, it just doesn't really have a smell. It just smells like primer and foundation, really. Okay, formula time. This is claimed to be a weightless cream bronzer with natural matte finish, which I completely agree with. I will say it is very light considering how creamy this product actually is. I find it to be very buildable and creamy on the face. I actually got the lightest shade sent to me and unfortunately I do feel like this is a it's very light for me. Like you probably can't really tell on my face right now. Like I actually built this up a lot for today and on camera I feel like you still can't really see it because it really is that light. It almost looks like it's a very natural bronze which I guess is a good thing because you want it to look natural but I do feel like this is a bit too light for me. I wish it had been maybe like a hair deeper like a shade or two maybe amber or golden tan. Um, I feel like it would have been better for me but even though I'm using so much of this product on my face to build the color I don't feel like it's very heavy on the skin which I really enjoy. Just to give you guys context on how I actually tested these out I used an eight hour time frame so I had to wear it for at least eight hours. On one side I would use a brush, the other I would use a sponge and I would use it with foundation and without foundation so it is quite a process. When I use this for the first time without foundation, I will say I thought it turned out really well. I did find a little bit of patchiness on the brush side um, with initial application, but I think it was also because my skin was relatively dry that day for some reason, like really, really dry. So there was just slight patchiness on the brush side, but otherwise, on a regular basis, now that I've been using it for a while, it's actually okay. It works completely fine. It was just an off day. I tried going straight in with a sponge and I it just felt really weird. There was not enough control with your placement and everything and I wouldn't recommend it. Even without foundation, it wore very nicely and at the end of the eight hours, the product was actually still there. Um, but I will say I feel like it wasn't as seamless 
as I anticipated it to be. Uh, I, I don't really know how to explain it, but this is like that kind of product that I feel like you almost need to wear a very light foundation and that will be the best combo, at least for me so far. So when I did use the product with foundation, I actually also had that reoccurrence of that patchiness, but again, I felt like it really was just that moment in time where my skin was super duper dry. Like you have no idea how dry. That there was still that patch over there. Like I said, now that I've used it even more, it's completely fine, no patchiness at all. I've realized the best way to apply this is definitely using a brush first. So I actually used this brush from Real Techniques to just dab it all over around the perimeters, work it into the skin, and then I go in with a wet sponge. This is also from Real Techniques and I just blend it in and it looks very nice. Um, I feel like the best way to make this work is actually on top of a very light foundation. Today I'm using the Revlon Candid and it wears very nicely on top of this. If not, I usually use like skin tints or like light to medium coverage um, foundations and I think it looks fabulous. Um, it just helps melt the product into the skin a bit better. And it, like I said, it just looks a little bit more seamless as compared to not wearing any base products. Over the eight hours, I think wearing foundation under this also helps um, it definitely wear a lot better because after the eight hours, I found that it actually stayed on my skin a lot nicer in comparison to not wearing any foundation. So that's just my opinion and hopefully a tip for you guys that if you guys want to use this, I would say wear some foundation underneath. Now, just to give you guys a bit of a comparison, I'm using the Fenty Cream Bronzer as a comparison because I love this product. Uh, I use this a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And I will say the Anastasia one actually puts up a really good fight and I can actually see myself using this a lot more. Again, I wish this was a little bit darker. I might just go out and buy a darker shade just to use it more but i really like this formula and the way it dries down to that powder finish so let me give you guys a little bit of a difference now the fenty formula is a little bit more slippy it is uh definitely lighter and you definitely need a little bit more time to build this up if you're going to make it a lot more obvious. I find this to be very, very beginner friendly and it's best if you want that like really quick, fast, uh, light bronze. But this, I feel like you need to set it down really fast. If not, the product is just gonna move really, really fast and it's just gonna ruin your makeup. So I would say like this I use on like an everyday if I'm just casually going uh, out and I just want a light bronze. I'll normally just take like my sponge, go in there and just like dab it all over my face and I'll just set my face with powder and I'm done. And it's very, very light and natural. Not only that, but I know some people like layering with um, powder bronzers, which I also love to do. However, you have to set your face with translucent powder after using this before you go on with a powder bronzer. Because if you don't, this is gonna leave like a patchy mess underneath. So make sure you use um, that layer of translucent powder. However, in comparison, the Anastasia one, I find it to be more creamy, less slippy. It's almost like it has less oils. The pigment is definitely there and it definitely packs a punch like instantly. Like the Fenty one, you definitely have to build the color up, but this is like boom in your face, like it's right there. So one of my favorite things about this is the fact that it dries down to this incredible, beautiful powder-like finish. Um, you don't necessarily have to set it down instantly, except for people like me who are like a little bit clumsy and I kind of get like my fingerprints in there. But <laughs> I'm just saying like you don't have to actually go in with translucent powder to set it and then go on top with a powder bronzer. You can actually go directly in with a powder bronzer and it doesn't turn out patchy. It just looks beautiful. I, I don't know how to explain it, but you basically just don't have to set it down because the finish is almost so powder-like, it looks flawless already. So when you go in with a powder bronzer, it doesn't look skippy because I feel like it has less oils in comparison to the Fenty one. 
the difference would be I feel like this is more of my everyday like quick on the go. I feel like I can actually use this for both for a quick bronze to go out um, but definitely more towards like full glam. I feel like I would use this more because I love the finish and how it looks in photos as well. So this is definitely leaning more towards like natural to full glam for me. I would say that if you have dry skin like me, both would actually suit you really well. I found this surprisingly very nice for dry skin even, so that says a lot. Um, however, I will say that if you do have oily skin, go for the Anastasia one because I think this will wear better compared to this because this is definitely more slippy and more oily and I don't think it will last on your skin as well as this. If I had to give it a grade, I'd probably give it an A minus and that's me being very picky right now because I think the formula is great. The packaging is so sleek and beautiful. It's simple um, and it's sturdy. It doesn't have a smell. It's great. The price point per ratio is fantastic. Okay. It is so worth it it in comparison to other choices right now like you don't even understand the price point is fantastic i'm talking off points because overall i still feel like they can add at least another two three more shades and the fact that we only get four shades in malaysia is kind of like making me dock off points okay and maybe also the fact that um i don't wear foundation or skin tints like every single day and i feel like that's the best way to wear it so if I'm not gonna wear foundation, maybe I wouldn't reach for it that much. So that's why I'm docking off points. Again, I'm just being very picky right now. So <laughs> overall, I think this is really worth the try and definitely bang for your buck. All right, guys, so that's my review on the Anastasia Beverly Hills Cream Bronzer. Uh, I hope that you guys actually enjoyed and found this very informative. If you want to see more, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give this video a like, and share it with your friends, whoever you think this may help out. Uh, but do stay tuned because I'm going to be releasing the next video, which is the cream blush. So if you're into that, make sure you stay tuned, and I will see you in that video. And the video after that. And the video after that. And that, and that, and that, that. Okay, <laughs> I'll see you guys then. Bye!